I feel really naked right now. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to another piercing video. So I initially filmed an intro for this, but as I'm editing right now, I realized that my energy levels were really low in the first minutes of filming. So I thought you deserved a proper welcome with more energy. So hi, welcome back. Yeah, it's been three years since I've had my vertical labret pierced and it's looking pretty good right now. I thought I would share everything that I've learned about this piercing in the last three years so that you have all the information you need for when you're gonna get pierced. Keep in mind that everything that I'm saying is based on my own experience and I'm not going to assume that what I'm saying will apply to you. Uh, this is just me sharing my knowledge. So yeah, let's get into it. The piercing is a surface one so it doesn't touch your teeth so it's not gonna damage your gum or the, the teeth in general as you can see. This piercing doesn't suit every anatomy and lip size. Very, very thin lips are not suitable for the piercing in terms of anatomy because there is no room at all. So you can go see the piercer that you trust and ask him if it is actually doable on your body. I've had a lot of comments about if it would look good on, on thin lips. I personally think yes because the jewelry, you can choose it so that it's very the length of the bar is very small so that it fits your lip, just like mine. And also I've had people mentioning they have type 1 diabetes and they got the piercing and it got rejected or they had to go in the hospital. So be, be aware of your diseases and talk about it with your piercer and really explore all of that. Okay, how to prepare for the piercing? So make sure you chose a really trustworthy piercer. This is super important, especially for a piercing like that because it's literally on your face, on your lip, on an area that you use all the time. So choose someone that you trust, speak about it with the piercer beforehand, make sure that he is listening to your concerns and replying to your concerns and he knows what he's doing. You can also ask him how many he's done in the past, if he has photos. And once you've chosen your piercer and you trust him and you're like, okay, this is good. Well, now comes the moment where you're gonna have to get a needle through your lip and just make sure that you eat properly, um, that uh, you, you've, you've digested so that you don't puke on the piercer or whatever. <laughs> Keep in mind, the pain is only gonna last for literally one second if your piercer is experienced. And then you have three or four seconds of discomfort while he puts a new jewelry in. So it's like five seconds of your life. The most painful part, I guess, would be the anxiety that you feel and the fear that comes when he's about to pass the needle through. That is the worst part. So just deep breath, relax, take a friend, just accept that it's gonna happen and it's gonna be very short and then you're gonna be, you're gonna be done. I made the mistake of asking my piercer to put the piercing aligned with my teeth. It should be in the center of your lip, not necessarily aligned with your teeth. Because when you move, it doesn't matter if it's aligned or not. What matters is that it is in the center and it's symmetrical in your bottom lip. And also, um, it's really pierced a little bit above the center, like in the, the middle of the lip. So when I close my mouth, the upper ball doesn't touch my upper lip. This is how I wanted it. When the piercer places the dots on your lip, take some photos, ask your friend, ask other people in the studio, maybe film yourself talking so that you see how the piercing moves around with your lip, you know? A really good piercer will, will be patient with you and really allow you to take all the time you need to make sure that you are satisfied with the placement. I personally feel a little bit insecure when I go see a piercer. I don't want to take too much of his time. I'm like, okay, well, good enough. And then I get it pierced and I'm like, damn. And this is what happened with my nose piercing where I'm not satisfied with the location at all now. I would have liked it to be more here, but I didn't know better at the time. So yeah, take your time. Now comes the piercing part. As I said, it's going to be very fast. So don't worry too much about it. Honestly, it's gonna be five seconds of your life of like extreme discomfort. The pain level for me was a six out of 10. I felt my skin getting punctured. It is not nice at all, but as I said, one to two seconds tops. And then when the piercing is done, it actually doesn't hurt at all. Like I could feel it when I would talk 
it was a bit uncomfortable but it wasn't painful also there is a possibility that it bleeds if you're scared of blood just keep that in mind now we're gonna come on to the healing part if you watch my first video which i recommend you do you can really see day by day the healing process how it evolves i think this is day three and it's already starting to look purple day four was the worst day in terms of how chapped and disgusting it was yeah and this is day seven. Basically, this is one of the fastest healing piercing that I've had, at least, because there's a lot of blood flow that goes through your lip. And it's the same with the tongue piercing, actually. It heals super, super fast. To clean it, don't use any alcohol. Even though it's gonna disinfect the area, it destroys um, the new cells that are forming. So it really makes the, the healing process much slower. So you need to use a solution that is much more gentle and that also cleans the area. And you can do it yourself. You can make sea salt, sea salt soaks. You do it twice a day. One fourth to, wait, one eighth to one fourth of teaspoon of sea salt, non-iodized salt, okay? We don't want table salt. We want real sea salt. You dilute that in one cup of water. And what I did is that I would make a huge, uh, a huge portion of it that I would keep in the fridge. And every morning and every night, I just uh, soak my lip for a few minutes and then you rinse it with water, that is important. And then if there's any crust or any dried blood, you just remove it with a cotton tip and you do it for, I don't remember, maybe two, three weeks. I actually don't remember, I'm sorry. But your piercer will, will tell you exactly how long you're supposed to do that for. In terms of drinking and eating and all that stuff, drinking is totally fine. I was drinking with a straw for the first week, I think. Please use a reusable straw, help the environment a little bit. And then eventually you can drink normally and you'll notice that the piercing touches the cup when you drink. You can even hear it. It's totally fine. So the important things to keep in mind is to just avoid putting chapstick on the pierced area, to avoid touching it, playing with it. Don't bite your lip. It's very sensitive. Don't kiss anyone, please. Oh yeah, and brushing your teeth is, is fine. Just be careful. Like I remember when I would brush my teeth, the bottom part, I would just really like try to push my lip away from, from the teeth. But it's really manageable. And as I said, you will figure it out as you go. Just whatever you do that is coming close to your mouth, be very gentle, be careful, always have clean hands. It's gonna swell and it's gonna bruise and it might scare you, but Keep in mind that these are normal, but if you see anything that's really unusual, like a discharge that is like really yellow, for example, or excessive bleeding or things like that, consult your piercer. Oh, and also avoid smoking, drinking, or putting lipstick on the first two weeks of the healing process, just to avoid any irritation and avoid slowing down the healing process. So you're gonna get pierced with a really long bar, this is the first bar that I had, and as you can see on my first video, how long it was, because it swells. But then after two weeks, the swelling should have gone completely down, and then you can go to your piercer and he will change it to a new bar. So here are the different size piercings that I've had throughout the years. I think this one was the first one I got pierced with, and this one might be the, the one that I got changed to after two weeks. I think after three months, that is when the piercing is fully, fully healed. And then you can go and experiment with new piercings. You can change it yourself. And then these are the ones that I purchased uh, on the website Crazy Factory. And I didn't know what was the ideal size for my lip. So I tried many different ones with different sizes of balls as well. I'm super satisfied with this size because it's very small and it's cute and it fits perfectly. Mine is a 16 gauge. I think it is about six or seven milliliters in length and the ball, uh, maybe two or three milliliters, which is yeah the smallest I could find on that website. I forgot to mention, but you will get pierced with a 16 gauge. I think the length might be like 14 milliliters. Now we're gonna move on to the crusty part, which is kissing and all that stuff. Kissing is fine. Really, like, kissing is just kiss normally. And once it's healed, you can just do whatever you want, like honestly, totally fine it, it just becomes a part of your lip now th this works for me but maybe you have more sensitive lips and we all have different conditions 
I know that I watched a video about, about a YouTuber that said that she had very sensitive lips and I think she removed it. So it really depends. But for me, like I can do whatever I want and it's fine. Sometimes it, it does become more sensitive because I touch it a lot. And then I just put a little bit of water mixed with very diluted tea tree oil just to kill any bacteria. And within two days it goes away. But yeah, you can like lick it, that's fine. You can kiss it. So saliva is totally okay. Uh, you can put lipstick without any problem as well. You can just do whatever you do normally. I would just avoid touching it with really, really disgusting, dirty hands. But you know, that's the case with any piercing you may have on your ears or, you know, anything. Your partner will feel the piercing when they kiss you. And I've never had any negative comments. They're always like, oh, it's funny. I can feel the piercing when I kiss you. It's not uh, bothering usually. And if someone has a problem with it, then you probably shouldn't be kissing them. In terms of any other intimacy, no problem at all. Oh yeah, sometimes I do play with it like this. When I'm a bit nervous, I play with it and that is not always good. And that can lead some, to some sensitivity. And a few times where it was sensitive and it started to hurt because I was maybe beginning to get a tiny infection then I'm pretty sure it was because of that. Try not to do it, but again, it's really hard. It's the same with the tongue piercing, actually. Like, you just can't help playing with it, but as soon as you notice that you're doing that, try to not do it. Sometimes I bite it. I bite my lips, unfortunately. It's kind of like biting your nails, except that I just remove the skin off my lips. Not very good. But so sometimes I end up biting the piercing and that hurts. Try not to do that, but yeah. It's, it's almost inevitable that you're gonna have some kind of tick that comes to your piercing because it's just there and it's like when you have a bit of anxiety, you're feeling a bit stressed, you're just gonna be playing with it and biting it. Now, we're gonna talk about hiding the piercing for your parents, for professional settings. The thing is that when you remove this piercing, it's gonna close up very, very quickly. Like, I think if I leave it open for like 15 minutes, it's already starting to close and like when I push it back in it's not very smooth when I push it back in and it sometimes hurts what I have found so from that website that I was showing you guys oh no wait where is it ah there it is okay this is like a transparent barbell retainer and what I did is that I cut it so that it's really the size of, of the piercing and then when you take it out you just put that in and you make sure that it doesn't come out on the, the sides. So I just took off the ball here. And here's what it looks like when there's nothing in it. I feel really naked right now. <laughs> This is what it's supposed to look like once you have the little retainer in. So it's not too visible. It should be okay for work. But your family or other people that you're trying to hide it to will probably see there's something in the middle of your lip. So yeah, just so you know. And then if you really want to take it out, definitely. I don't know how long it's going to take for it to disappear completely and it might it might leave some scaring. That is very possible. I do think that with a vertical labret, the scaring is quite minimal because there's so much blood flow and it heals really quickly. But maybe here, the bottom hole might be noticeable. I, I don't know, actually. I wanted to talk about judgment from others and confidence because this is a piercing on your face, on your lip. Like It is probably one of the first things that people see when they look at your face depending on how visible your jewelry is, but it's a piercing that you have to wear with confidence. And I think it can really boost confidence as well. Personally, for me, it boosted my confidence. I felt really empowered with this piercing. And I think this is the purpose of piercings. You know, they should be empowering. I don't know if people judge me. I mean, they probably do. The goal is to not really care if they do judge you, which is not always easy, but no one has ever come up to me and said that it was super ugly and I should take it out, except for my dad. I try not to care about what he thinks and I only see him like twice a year, so it's fine. 
but otherwise in the street at school or if you work I worked in a thrift shop and in a restaurant before and no one has ever ever said anything to me not even the clients not even my boss like they're really all accepting of it especially nowadays where piercings are more and more accepted for now I identify as heterosexual what I'm most insecure about is how guys react to it because some guys are really not into it and I think well that is going to be another topic I guess but I have some insecurities when it comes to to guys I guess where if there's someone that I really find attractive and I want to like you know get closer to I will be very self-conscious about what that person thinks of me then the question of oh does he think that it's really weird or vulgar that I have a lip piercing is he not into that and I think most of the guys that I have been with are not necessarily big fans but they don't mind it either because they're more attracted to my personality I hope for some people it can be a turn off I would say try not to care about it and also like it just makes like a filtering out process where only people who really think you're beautiful and you have a great personality will be there but sometimes I have this little insecure voice in my head this voice that kind of tells you to change yourself to please others and have guys me be more attracted to you which I'm trying to shut it off I think I'm doing a great job at it so far because I've never taken off my piercing for anyone except my dad so in that sense I think this piercing is really empowering and can really boost your confidence because no matter what that little voice says in your head you're still there keeping the piercing owning up to it and being the person that you want to express you know yeah yo i'm back i had no more battery and now the sun is gone it's very dark a little summary about confidence is that it has made me feel more confident in social settings because i really think i look beautiful with the piercing and you're beautiful too and i get a lot of compliment about it and the people who don't like it they don't tell me so in that sense definitely confidence boost and then the only moments I feel insecure is when there is a guy that I'm really attracted to and I don't know if they will like it. And because I have this little voice, you know, it comes up. But on those moments, I really try to make myself feel confident and not change myself for anyone. And in that sense, it also makes me more confident. It just requires more of an effort. You know, you feel the insecurity. It's right there in front of you and you try to shut it down and like, nope, this is me. This is who I am. And if the person doesn't like it, that's their problem. So yeah, it can also help you in that way. I hope this video was really helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, if I forgot anything, please let me know in the comments below. And if you do get this piercing, please share your experience with everyone. This way everyone can have access to your experience in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to put a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Even though I don't make a lot of piercing videos anymore, I make vlogs and I make other lifestyle stuff so if you're into that make sure to subscribe oh also if there's any piercing video you would like me to make let me know in the comments i would be happy to make them because they're really fun so yeah bye bye